Hello and welcome to Bike Excellence Tutorials. Well, we are still uh, solving some questions from the University of Zambia uh, tutorial sheet. And this is uh, PHY 1015 and 1010. Wow. So this is circular motion. Now, the question says, a string of 30 centimeter has one end attached to a fixed point and the other to a mass of 100 grams, <clears throat> which revolves in a horizontal circle 80 times per minute. Calculate the angle of inclination of the string to the vertical and calculate the tension in the string. All right, so usually in physics, if you can't see it, you can't solve it. So the first thing that you must create is a mental picture of the system out of this question. So now let's see. So we are told to say we have some part that is uh, fixed like that. And then we can say we have a bulb. So assuming that that string is, um, is straight, right? Doesn't have bends because I'm using a normal. Right, so that is moving in that circle and we have the radius there. We have the angle. So we need to find this angle of inclination and also the tension in this string. All right, so now I'll, the first thing that we need to do is to resolve that tension. We can see that it is at an angle. So that tension is going to be resolved in these two. Okay, it's going to be resolved in, um, in the y and in the x and one other force that we have we have also the weight like that now uh, these uh, forces we have at this this is the same theta so if we resolve, we're going to have T cos theta here. And here we're going to have T sine theta. And here we basically have the, the weight of the bulb. So in other terms, we have something like that. These are the forces acting on that mass. Right, so we have that one. So now we look at Newton's law, second law, and we have the y, we are going to have t cos theta minus the weight being equal to zero. So we have t cos theta being equal to the weight. So let that be my equation one. And also an equation in the horizontal is where this is uh, revolving. So we have the centripetal acceleration. So what force acts as centripetal force is T sine theta being equal to mv squared over r. So what I can do here is to divide my two equations Equation two divided by equation one, I'm going to have something like this. And I'm going to have mv squared over r being divided by mg. So what I'm going to have is sine theta over cos theta equal to this one and that one will cancel. So I'm going to have v squared over RG, the masses are going to cancel here. 
All right. So once I reach this stage, I look at the question that I have. Do I have the radius? No, I don't have the radius. Do I have the length of the string? Yes, I have the length of the string. Then I can make use of the length of the string and the angle to get the radius. And also, do I have the tangential velocity? No, I don't have the tangential velocity. So you can see that we have three unknowns. We don't know the angle. We don't know the tangential velocity. We don't know the radius either. So how do you, we go about it? We have to make sure that we have less unknowns. Now, let's look at what we do. The first step we take is this. We know that from this uh, system, the first one, the first figure that I drew, what I have is I can get I can get something like a right angled triangle. So now this right angled triangle is going to look like this, all right? So I have an angle there, I have the radius, and I have the length of the string that is 30 centimeter. So from here, I can say I have sine theta being equal to the radius over the length of the string. So now, the length of the string or the radius is going to be length of the string times the sine theta. All right. So you keep this one. All right. And then you go now to the relationship that exists between the angular velocity and the tangential velocity. Now, what's the relationship? The relationship is just that. All right. So I have that one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute those now. So what I, it's going to happen is sine theta over cos theta. I know somebody was predicting out there to say their sine theta over cos theta is a term, but not in this question. In this question, we are just going to keep them just like that. You're going to see what's going to happen. I think you have already seen when we replace R with L sine theta. So something has to cancel there. So what we're going to have is that squared over RG, which is R squared omega squared over RG. So that and that goes, all right? And Remember in the question that the mass is 100 grams and it's revolving at, uh, okay, so here we have R omega squared over G. All right, and it's revolving at 80 times per minute. So what's that? 80 times per minute, that is frequency that we have. All right, so the frequency there is 80 per minute, sorry. A minute. So we have to convert that one as well, I think, to standards, which is per second. All right. So now, when we replace, when we replace, we are going to have sine theta over cos theta being equal to R right here is L sine theta times omega squared over G. All right, so you can see that we have a sign and a sign here. They go and we can close multiply and we're going to have G being equal to L omega squared cos theta, like that. And then we can divide by L omega squared, L omega squared, so that cos theta is G L omega squared, like that. Now, we have the frequency here. We have the frequency that we have been given. So now, how do we get the frequency? So we know that from here, angular velocity is basically two pi times the frequency, like that. All right, so now, <clears throat> 
we can get the angular velocity two pi times the frequency is 80 per minute, but we want it to be per second. So we know that one minute is basically skist is second. So we're going to have that and that so that we have um, what we have to there three to there four. Right, so we have about eight pi over three per second as our angular velocity. All right, so now we can say, because it's going to be 9.81 as the, um, the gravitational acceleration. And the length, which is going to be 0 0.3, is it 0 0.3? Yeah, because it was 30 centimeters. So in meters is 0 0.3, and we have 8 pi over 3 squared, like that. So how do we get that one? So now, the angle is basically going to be Let's punch that one. Okay. So when we punch that one, we are going to have um, 62.2 degrees. So that's the angle. So this is where or why a lot of students had to find issues when coming to solve this question. Like, sad, things are not coming out, things are not coming. So this was the procedure that you needed to take for you to get the angle. A little bit involving, yeah, but it's about connecting ideas. All right, so now the second question, we are being asked to find the tension in the string. So you can use any of, uh, <clears throat> of the equations there. So let's use for the y component where we have t cos theta being equal to mg. So tension is basically mg over cos theta. So we have the mass is 0 0.1 kilogram. It's 100 uh, uh, gram. So you convert it to kilogram, you get that one. And divide by cos 2.2. So the tension right. So what would be our tension? So our tension here is going to be roughly 2.1 newton. So that is how you solve that question. I know that this video has been so helpful to you. So kindly give it a reaction, like it, share with your colleagues, give me a comment in the, in, in the comment section there so that uh, we keep ourselves on the same pace as we are making these uh, helpful tutorial videos. Thank you so much for your time.